there is an amazing piece of art done by a Korean artist which is unique. It took him two years to complete the scroll. It's not a painting, but a picture created by writing thousands of words with shaded letters. It is actually the entire New Testament written out by hand. There are about 185,000 words on the scroll with an average of 1,000 words per line. The letters are drawn, some thick and some thin, so that they bring out the picture of Jesus. There are 27 angels surrounding Jesus and looking to him, representing the 27 books of the New Testament. The original work was almost two meters long by one meter wide. The words reveal the picture of Jesus as they are in light and dark to bring out the portrait of Jesus. The words have become flesh, a person. I don't have much doubt that the artist had the words of John chapter 1 and verses 1 to 14 in mind. And he was drawing this fantastic picture. In John 1, we learn of Jesus before he came to earth as a baby in a manger. Here we learn of what God was doing before the first Christmas day. The term word is the Greek word logos. Logos means word in the sense that we mean it, but it also means reason. The basic idea is that Jesus is both the word of God and the wisdom of God. Jesus was the Logos before he came to earth. He is still the Logos today and he will always be the Logos. I invite you to read the first three verses in John 1. John chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. In the beginning was the war, and the war was with God, and the war was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Clearly, John is telling us that Jesus is eternal. John's words purposely echo the words used in the creation account. In the beginning, God created the heavens 
and the earth. Beginning is used in the sense of before all time. While we cannot fully comprehend it or explain it, Jesus has always existed. One of the best ways to put this is the following definition. There was never a time when Jesus was not. There was never a time when Jesus was not. Jesus has always been and he always will be. Jesus described himself this way, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is simply but significantly proclaiming that he is an eternal being. And of course, John is telling also clearly, Jesus is God. The world was with God, and the world was God. When we sing about the little baby on Christmas Day, we are singing about no one less than God himself. Jesus was God before coming to earth. He was God in the 33 years he spent here on earth, and he will always be God. If a person believes anything less than this concerning Jesus, they do not believe in the Jesus of scripture. And Jesus, of course, is the creator. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Jesus Christ is the creator of the universe. From a full reading of scripture, it would appear that the Father, Son, and Spirit were all involved in the creation account, but Jesus took center stage. In the next verses, four to nine, we read, John chapter 1, verses 4 to 9. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. This great God, this eternal being, this creator of the universe wants to introduce himself to each and every one of us. Jesus is the world that brings light to our lives. The whole purpose of this season is great up in the fact that God wants to know you, 
to be in relationship with you, to save you from your condition, and to be your companion for all of eternity. He sent John the Baptist to testify to the people above him, specifically so they might believe in him. Surely, we can say that Jesus' purpose in coming to earth is wearing our shoes today. We are the reason that Jesus came to earth. You are the reason Jesus came to earth. And in verse 5, we read, And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Darkness is used here to represent evil and Satan. The power of the light of Jesus Christ can never be thrown down. Let's not forget that this world, Jesus, is God, the Creator. He was full of the Holy Spirit in his incarnation. He cannot be defeated anymore. He cannot be defeated by anyone at any time, at any place, and or any reason. This word of God that lives among us has the power to withstand each and every attack that is ever made against him. This is not some helpless infant we are talking about, but the most powerful being that has ever and can ever exist, Jesus. It is really hard for us to imagine what it must have been like to come down to this planet from the glory Jesus had experienced for all of eternity. To have never been in the presence of sin and then to willingly come into the war, in a war infested with it is a quite revealing to us. The only possible reason he would do this was because of his love. The Bible says, just as he shows us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God loves you before you even existed. That, to me, is one of the best things we need to remember this Christmas season. It tells us that without a doubt, we matter to God. And then in verses 10 and 11, in John 1, we read, He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. These verses are telling us that even though Jesus, God in the flesh, willingly came to earth for our benefit, many refused to acknowledge him 
and in fact rejected him. And what was true when he came is still true today. Some people, for whatever reason, will not accept God's great gift of himself. But there is encouragement here because John adds in verses 12 and 13, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in him, in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Jesus doesn't force himself on anybody. We are free to reject him if that is what we choose to do. But for those who accept him, who accept his invitation to relationship, great benefits await. All who accept him are accepting by him. Nobody is ever refused entrance into a relationship with Jesus Christ. There are no membership requirements, no fees to pay, no quotas to fill. All you have to do is believe in him and he will believe in you. All who accept him are children of God. Placing your faith in Jesus Christ automatically entitles to become a child of God. All who accept him are born again. God is going to change you from the inside out you will experience a rebirth where you are transformed into the person God has created you to be. All your past is behind you. Your future is certain. Your purpose is now clear. When you accept Jesus, you might have the same name, wear the same clothes, have the same job and family, but you are not the same person you were before. God works the miracle in your life, and you are now one of the redeemed. And then the verse 14 in John 1. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The King of heaven put aside his heavenly robes and divine prerogatives. He came to us as one of us. He lived among us, ate with us, drank with us, felt with us, all to win our hearts, all to win our love. He could have forced us he could have overwhelmed us, but he chose to show us his love in a very special way. He stands here today with the smile of love and arm extended. He is the God who became real so that we could experience 
experience. He's transforming love. Jesus is not just a truth to believe in. He is a person to be experienced. People want to know what God is like. All they have to do is look. Jesus, our Savior. Jesus came to show us the love and faithfulness of God. He came to reveal to us the glory of God. Everything about the nature of Jesus is also true about the nature of the Father and also the Holy Spirit. In Jesus coming to earth, the first Christmas day, he was coming to show us the true nature of God. Jesus gave himself for us. Imagine it. God, who could have crushed the world because of its sin, came into this planet to be crushed for our sins. The very one who said that everyone who sinned would die came to the world to die in our place. He both pronounced the judgment and took the judgment upon himself. We didn't even understand the danger we were in. We were too ignorant to ask for his help, but he came to save us from that danger anyway. And the Bible says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and die for us sinners. Now, no one is likely to die for a good person, though someone might be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. What an amazing love. Can you see what God has done for us? He could have just given up on us and wiped us from the face of this planet. He could have not cared, but he cared enough to come to earth. And not only that, but to come for the purpose of dying in our place and then rising again from the dead. I say that God could have chosen otherwise, but in reality, he couldn't have chosen any other way because if he had done anything else, it would have gone again his own nature. You see, God, at his very core, loves you, no matter who you are and no matter what you have done. He has done everything he can to bring you back to him. And now, it is up to you, what will you do with Jesus? What will I do with Jesus, God in the flesh? May we decide not only to accept him as our personal Savior and Lord, but also to follow him faithfully every day of our lives. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father,
We thank you for the message in John chapter 1. We thank you for Jesus, the best gift we have received ever. We thank you for the privilege of being called your children. Thank you, Father, for this church, Frankston, and the privilege you gave me together with my wife and my son to be part of this lovely church family during the last two years. Please bless everyone abundantly and O oh Lord, give us your Holy Spirit. May we receive the baptisms of the Holy Spirit so we can be faithful to you under any circumstances until the end and very soon live together and enjoy eternity in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.